So something super weird happened to me just about an hour ago. I was um, sitting out in the audience um, right at the back, and Sam was introducing all the people that were speaking today. And then George's face came up, and some girls screamed, and then my face came up, and one girl screamed. And what was really weird was Sam's like, oh, Sasha's wife's here, and, which is true, because I was sitting with her at the back, but she didn't scream. <laughs> so I'm super confused and kind of a little bit uh, insecure about this whole situation. I don't know what to do with it, so if anybody has any ideas, just let me know later in case something awkward happens um, after this goes on. So... <laughs> I've been in this game for well over a decade, and by game, I mean kind of the whole digital thing. And like probably a lot of you, I got into this like super excited about the potential. Like I was all in on the whole revolutionary potential of digital. You know, I was seeing things around the world, you know, things like um, the, the Arab Spring, seeing stuff like Occupy come together. I was saying really dumb things like if my space was a country, it would be the eighth biggest country in the world, um, which makes no sense in terms of comparison. And, you know, but I was so excited about this thing called digital, because I was like, it's gonna democratize things, you know, it's gonna completely disintermediate big business, it's gonna revolutionize the world. And in a, you know, and in a lot of ways, you can actually say that it has. Um, but in a lot of ways, when we went to, or when I went to, and a lot of us went to our clients and talked to them about their business in digital, we kind of oversold it a little bit, and we kind of fucked it up for everybody. Because all we could really talk about is we went in there and we're like, it's gonna revolutionize your business, and they're like, it didn't revolutionize our business, and you're like, but we got clicks, and we got views, and they're like, that didn't sell stuff, and I was just like, oh. So it was difficult, and the truth is, is we kind of fucked it up in the early going. The good news is, is that we're kind of in the third phase of digital now. And the other bit of good news for those of, those of us that work in kind of the digital domain is it's really the only growth area in town. If you look at any industry in any country, the only area that's really getting any kind of investment or that's delivering any kind of returns is digital, right? The digitization of people's business, digitization of economies, um, the, the monetization of information, monetization of communities, it's the only growth game in town. And that puts a lot of onus uh, on us to be able to not do what we did in the first go round, which was just oversell. One of the things that's kind of a consistent theme that at least I see in, in our business and the way in which that we work with clients is that we have a bit of a deficit in the old world uh, economy and an old world understanding how the old world economy works and specifically in the way in which that a lot of our clients' businesses work. We assume to know, we assume that we, we, we understand all the mechanics of it, but relating that directly to digital is actually difficult. And it's a hard problem. It's a hard problem to solve. And we can't be shy about that. We can't, we can't be shy about the fact that it's, it's not as easy as just comparing things like views and reach and engagement and community to dollars and sales and distribution uh, and globalization. And I think that's, it's okay to acknowledge that. But we're able to bridge that gap and we can find ways to bridge that gap now and I think that it's really important for us to really lean forward into that and start to adopt ways in which to bridge kind of that old world economy into the digital revolution of which that we all understand, um, which is transforming our global economy. So I've had the great fortune of uh, working uh, around the world in a couple of different countries and came back to Canada around 2010 and came back to the company that I work for currently, uh, the Dentsu Aegis Network, which was then the Aegis Media Network, and we were doing things pretty old school. I mean, it was channeled silos, we were buying based on media, and digital was just this bucket of stuff that we should be doing. Didn't differentiate between search, mobile, social, video, there's no differentiation, it was just a pool of money. And we were trying to convince our clients with the same kind of methodology of, you know, it's a revolution, look at all this user behavior, but we kind of burned those bridges early on because of guys like me that went in and said it's gonna revolutionize your business. And so we really had to kind of step up our game in terms of the way in which that we talk to our clients about digital. And there were three big things, three big pillars uh, that we had to really emphasize in um, bringing to our clients to be able to, co to convince them that digital was the way forward. The first was kind of real insights and data. 
Like we couldn't, we, we couldn't shy away from that really rich and consumer understanding and segmentation, um, both from like the traditional means of qualitative research and panel, dis you know, panel discussions, but then also the behavioral stuff. A lot of the stuff that Google has that's extremely valuable from a behavioral perspective. The second thing we needed to do is we had to move from what we traditionally did, which was channel planning, get away from ch like screen planning, because screen planning doesn't get you any closer to what you really want to get to, um, and get to audience-based planning. And audience-based planning simply means is really understanding um, the connections between those groups of people and buying that way, buying against those, those audiences that you want to connect with. The third, third big piece we wanted to do is really understand the business impacts. And Tr connecting directly what digital was doing for our clients' businesses. And in that area, we talked a lot, looked a lot at econometric, econometric modeling, media mix modeling, and invested some money and resources behind that. From Insight's perspective, we have this you know, proprietary system called CCS. Um, it's a panel-based system, incorporates a bunch of fancy stuff, um, but it allows us to take rich segmentation and understanding of our customers and our clients, um, our clients' customers and consumers, uh, and really kind of get to those, those attitudinal behavioral nuances. And what was important for us is to marry that with some behavioral data. So what we were able to do with, in partnering with uh, Google and YouTube is start to integrate the reach curves that they have um, within their data set. So you could start to get a really accurate representation of these rich, deep segments and then buy against them. So that's really, really important. Um, from an audience-first planning perspective, I mean, this is just going from top down to bottom up. It's no longer for us about buying TV and topping up with digital video. It's very much about understanding what's the digital audience and digital reach that you can achieve that's relevant to our clients' businesses, and then topping it up with, with traditional television. And the final piece, and I'll talk a little bit about this couple of studies that we did, was really understanding the business impacts. So we did a couple market mix models with a company that we have within the group called data to decisions and really to understand the contribution that you would, we would see from our digital investments, um, specifically some of our video investments on their businesses. And we found a couple of really interesting things. In one, in one of the studies, uh, we found that uh, high impact video and online video delivered 7x the ROI that traditional broadcast did, which was cool. So huge upside in terms of the ability to invest at a really high rate of return. Um, and in the second one, we saw that actually super competitive category, super low margins, um, YouTube outperformed their peer set two to one, right, from an ROI perspective. Now we've got about 60% of our clients that are kind of planning this way with us, um, looking at that kind of contribution and audience-based audience first, um, audience first uh, planning, uh, and that's helping to transform the way in which that we operate and deliver returns for our clients' businesses. So that's super important. Um, and our relationship with Google has actually gone through a huge transformation. Um, we've got lots of data sharing agreements within our two organizations, and we've increased our spend with them sixfold over three years. Because it works, right? Because it's, it started to prove the case that digital and investment with Google was going to deliver the returns to our clients' actual businesses, not just deliver arbitrary measures that we could find in digital. So, the moral of the story that I'm trying to share with you in this short five minutes is, don't, don't do what I did, don't fuck it up. Thank you very much.